Well, last week we launched a series of messages that explores the story of Jesus from the gospel according to Mark. And the question that we're asking in each and every week of this series as we walk our way to Easter Day is one of the most important questions, if not the most important question, that you'll ever answer. The question that we're asking each week is, who then is this? As we look at these episodes from Jesus' life, we need to ask the question, who is this guy named Jesus? And whether you have settled that question in your heart and in your soul decades ago, or whether you're in the process of wrestling with that question even now, I, I want to encourage you through the course of this series to think deeply, to question critically, to discuss the story of Jesus together and work hard at this story. It's just that as you do that, there's one favor I have to ask of you, and that is that you approach the story of Jesus with an open mind and an open heart. You see, regardless of, of where we are in our relationship with Jesus, when we come to God's Word figuring we already have it figured out, like some of these episodes that we're going to be talking about in this series, a lot of us have heard these stories more times than we can count. And if we allow ourselves to come to the story figuring, okay, yeah, I've already heard this one, let's move on. Or, I've already heard this story, and I know what it means. If we, if we do that, then this time that we spend together becomes little more than an academic exercise or a religious practice. And so whether you've, you've had... These, answer, these questions answered in your heart and your mind for decades, or whether you're, you're wrestling with it for the first time, please come to, God, come to God's Word with an open heart and an open mind. Because when we come to God's Word open to what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us, very often we will hear God speaking into the depths of our souls, sometimes encouraging us sometimes challenging us, but always drawing us into closer relationship with him. Now, last week we started with the bottom line for the Gospel of Mark. Here's how Mark begins his story of Jesus' life. This is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. That's Mark chapter 1, verse 1. That's how he begins his story. And there's two reasons why I'm pointing that out. For one, it was really, 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 really cold last week. Like, today feels warm compared to last Sunday, doesn't it? You know, some of our cars wouldn't even start last Sunday, and I, and I get that. And, and some of us just weren't able to be here. And um, I wanted to be sure that no one missed out on this foundational element of the book of Mark. Because this is what the entire book is about. All of the episodes that Mark shares, because Mark's not going to tell us every detail of Jesus' life. He, he selected a specific number of episodes in order to share the story of Jesus. And even the way he arranges his gospel account, which is different than like the way John arranges his account. The episodes that he chooses and the way he arranges those episodes into his storyline, they're all set to establish this point. That Jesus isn't just a really good guy. He's not just an incredibly wise rabbi. And he's not just some charismatic leader. Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. And by the way, if you weren't able to be here last week and you missed out on the live stream, uh, you can go back to our website or our Facebook page or the YouTube channel uh, last week's sermon is posted there for you. In fact, we've also posted the digging deeper questions and the reading plan from your from your note sheet with you or for you. 
And uh, we're going to continue to do that throughout the course of this series. So if you ever have to miss one of our services and you can't connect on the live stream, uh, you can always, uh, you don't have to miss out on an episode. You can always catch, catch it there. Now, the other reason that I'm coming back to this starting point is because I want those of you who perhaps have not yet come to a conclusion about who Jesus is, I I want you to know that we are really glad you're here. Whether that's in this room, or whether that's watching on our live stream, or whether you're one of those that's going to be watching this sermon sometime later on, we want you to know that we're glad you're here. The Prince Street Church is a safe place for you to ask questions. It's a safe place for you to have doubts. It's a safe place for you to explore the possibility of faith. And, and, and so if you don't have it all put together yet, you're still welcome. And we want to encourage you to engage in this story of Jesus' life. Don't just believe this stuff because we believe it. And certainly don't believe this just because I say it. Instead, we want to encourage everyone to engage in the story of Jesus and ask the question, who then is this? Because if you'll do that with an open mind and an open heart, we're convinced that God will speak to the depths of your soul in ways that just might surprise you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful that you have given us the gift of your Son. We're so grateful that you've given us the gift of your Word. We're grateful that you've given us the gift of your Holy Spirit to lead us in truth, to speak on your behalf. Father, we ask, that you would open our ears, that you would open our hearts, that we might receive what you have to say to us today. And we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now before I get to the episode for today, I want to take a survey. See, over the years of my life, on a variety of occasions, I have found myself getting really angry about the hurt that I've experienced from religious rules and religious institutions. And I don't think I am alone, so I'm going to ask a really risky question. There it is on the screens. Have you, like me, have you been hurt by religious rules and institutions? If you have, would you you be bold enough to raise your hand? Yeah, thanks for being so honest. Isn't it amazing we're here? (laughs) Isn't it amazing we continue to show up? Now, some of us are here this morning, and you're in this room because of the experiences and the hurts that you've had in other places. And so you've left those places and you've come here. I guess I should warn you, it's probably just going to be a matter of time till you get hurt here too. Because we are sinful people saved by grace. And we're not going to try to hurt anybody, but chances are really good that if at least no one else does, at some point I probably will. And so I'll ask your forgiveness in advance. Some of us, as I look around the room this morning, you're here even though you have been deeply hurt in this place. And it's amazing that you're here. And I'll bet we all know at least one, if not many more than one people who've quit church completely because of the hurt they've experienced from religious rules and religious institutions. Now the reason I ask this question is because those of us who have found themselves getting angry about and being hurt by religious rules and institutions we've got something in common with Jesus. Because as you read through the story of Jesus' life, you will see that Jesus is constantly in conflict with religious people, religious rules, and religious 
institutions. And there's a reason for that. In a nutshell, it's because Jesus is always more interested in people than he is in rules. Amen? Ooh. Crickets. Jesus is much more interested in people than he is in rules. And so he was always getting in trouble with the religious leaders and the religious people who were focused on rules more than they were on people. And in today's episode, where the, the crux of the problem is going to be religious rules centered around the Sabbath day. So I invite you to grab a Bible and join me at Mark chapter 2. If you want to use the copy in the rack in front of you, you are more than welcome to do so. In fact, those page numbers are listed for you in your program if that helps you get there quicker. I also want you to remind you that throughout the course of this series, I am using the New Living Translation, and so if the words that I say are a bit different than in your English translation, you'll know why. Uh, but with that said, let me get to the episode this morning. This is Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through chapter 3, verse 6. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what's unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some, some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time, Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Now, as you read through the story of Jesus' life in the Gospel of Mark, I, I want to remind you that although the episodes that Mark shares are in a general sequence of timeline, in that they start with the opening of Jesus' ministry and they end with the fulfillment of Jesus' ministry, that Mark groups his episodes by subject more than he does by precise timeline. And so often you will find stories that meet a theme grouped together. That doesn't necessarily mean these things happen back to back to back. For example, in the passage that I read for you this morning, I've given you two stories out of a group of five stories that Mark uses to show how Jesus is always more focused on people than he is on rules. And in the two that I shared, the issue is over the details of Sabbath observance. Now, go ahead and give the next slide, please. There's no question, as you read the Bible, there's no question that God has commanded that his people are to keep the Sabbath day, that are to honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So how is it possible that given something this clear, how is it possible that Jesus can get in trouble by putting people over rules. Well, the conflict comes because of a matter of perspective and priorities. You see, in the minds of the Pharisees, this rule, th this instruction to honor the Sabbath day, to remember it and keep the Sabbath day holy, this is a matter that God is requiring something from people. 
And they don't want anyone to make the mistake of breaking this rule. And so the Pharisees created this whole list of rules that protected the big rule. So there's all these little rules, and they deal with all kinds of subjects, like, like how far you can walk on the Sabbath, uh, what you can eat on the Sabbath, even how much good you can do on the Sabbath. The Pharisees created this, this elaborate list of rules intended to protect the Sabbath and to make sure that God's people were giving God what he requires of them. Because in the Pharisees' mind, the Sabbath is about God expecting something from his people. So given that perspective and given those priorities, Jesus is a problem. Because Jesus is not honoring all the little rules. He doesn't fit in their box. And so in their mind, Jesus, well, Jesus is a problem that just needs to go away. But I told you the issue isn't to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The issue is the priority and the perspective. In the Pharisees' mind, the perspective and priority is the Sabbath is something that God expects and requires from people. But in Jesus' perspective and with Jesus' priorities, the Sabbath is something entirely different. That it's a gift that God gives to his people. And that's a big difference. It's a huge difference when we begin to see Sabbath as God intends it. Not for God's benefit, but for ours. And so in the episode of eating, Jesus cites this precedent from way back in the life of King David with, in which hunger overrides the precedent of these little rules. See, on both occasions, back in David's day and now as Jesus and his disciples are walking through the grain field, devout men did something that was technically forbidden. And Jesus' argument is that, you know, if God didn't condemn David, then you can't condemn us. See, the problem wasn't with whether or not they were eating. The problem was with the way religious rules hurt people. In the interaction with the man with the shriveled hand, Mark tells us that the people were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. I, I hope you saw that. Because it betrays their perspective and their priority. They're looking for a way to trip Jesus up. And so I find it interesting that it's Jesus who takes the initiative. It's Jesus who drives the action. Believe it or not, there were even religious rules about whether or not you could heal someone on the Sabbath. Now, I will admit that that rule was for doctors, because you're not allowed to work on the Sabbath, so a physician is not allowed to heal on the Sabbath. That was the rule. But we got a little problem here, because Jesus isn't a doctor. Jesus is seen as a rabbi in the synagogue. And so when Jesus comes right out and asks a very pointed question, there is no answer. They remain silent. And once again, the problem wasn't with healing. The problem was with the way religious rules exceeded God's intent. And as a result, brought a burden of hurt on people. Now, there is plenty more that we could talk about in this passage. And I want to encourage you to use the, deeper, the digging deeper questions on the back of your note sheet to interact in your homes, uh, maybe in your workplaces or online, however it's going to help you best. I really want to encourage you to engage in these stories. Please don't make the mistake of showing up here, listening to a sermon, and then going home, and that's the end of it. Because if you do that, you're really wasting your time. I'm not that good. It's not, worth, it's not worth your time just to show up to listen to me talk. You know, take advantage of it and, and really wrestle with the story of Jesus' life. I also want to invite questions. You know, as you're, whether it's about this storyline or whether it's about the reading plan, the stories that you're reading in the reading plan, if you've got questions, feel free to shoot me an email, a Facebook message, however it's going to help you. Give me a call if you like. 
uh, I'd be happy to interact with you and, and maybe even want to interact within your small group experiences and, and dialoguing about these things. But I promised that each week we'd come back to this essential question. And that is, who is this? Who is this Jesus? And, and in today's passage, Jesus himself gives us the answer, doesn't he? Jesus says, I am Lord of the Sabbath. And in this simple statement, Jesus makes it clear that all of those rules that the Pharisees established to protect the Sabbath and to ensure that the people were keeping it holy, that those rules were actually an obstacle from people engaging with God. That they're a burden, that they're creating hurt for people. Instead of helping people engage with God, they were causing problems. And that made Jesus angry. Did you catch that? Jesus is angry. In fact, Mark tells us that he's angry and deeply distressed at the people's stubborn hearts. Hearts made stubborn by being more focused on rules than on people. But you see, Jesus isn't interested in rules. Jesus wants a relationship. And I know that that strikes some of us as really odd because we were raised in a world of rules. We were raised in environments where, where being a Christian means you must do these things and you can't do these things. And if you don't do the things you're supposed to do, and if you do some of the things you aren't supposed to do, you're going to get whacked. Because God is a religious taskmaster, and if, you, and if you cross even the smallest line, he's going to whack you. In fact, there are people in churches every Sunday simply because they honestly believe that if they don't show up for church, something bad's going to happen that week. I know none of you are there. But that all boils down to this rule orientation. And I don't know, I'm, well, I think I know where it comes from, but I know where it doesn't come from. It doesn't come from here. Because if you will read this, from cover to cover, you will find a story of a God who isn't interested in rules. He's interested in people. And it's not that he wants stuff from us. He wants stuff for us. And he didn't send his son into this world to condemn us for the bad stuff we do. He came to save us from that stuff. And to bring us into a relationship with him. A relationship not based on the things we do or don't do, but on the things that Jesus Christ has already done. The finished work of Calvary. Jesus said, or Mark says, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus says, or Mark says, Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath who calls us to leave all of the rules to those people who just want to be religious and who invites us into a relationship that is focused on what God has for us rather than what he demands from us. That's who Mark says Jesus is. The question is, who do you say Jesus is? Who is Jesus in your heart, in your mind, in your soul? What, what is God whispering into, your, into the depths of your spirit in this moment? And we want to give you some time to reflect on that. And so as our musicians come to the platform... I want to invite you to use this next song as a time of reflection. Feel free to ignore the song completely. Feel free to take this time to just 
reflect and to listen for God's voice. If you want to be alone, there's space here at the prayer rail. You're welcome to use it. There's room back in the, in the chapel. You're welcome to use it. Of course, you're also welcome to sit right where you are. And if you'd like to sing along, I suppose you can. But, but more than anything, we want to encourage you to listen for what, God is, what God's Spirit is whispering into your soul. And, and then I want to pray for us. Michelle? Michelle?